This is a presentation on the principles and clinical applications of coronary near-infrared spectroscopy. Near-infrared spectroscopy is a novel intravascular imaging modality that is FDA-approved, similar to optical coherence tomography and intravascular ultrasonography. In this presentation, we will attempt to provide an overview of the technique and principles underlying the performance of near-infrared spectroscopy, describe its clinical validation as well as its clinical applications. How does near-infrared work? First of all, the near-infrared spectrum is that segment of the electromagnetic radiation that is immediately next to the red part of the visible spectrum. The reason that this part of the electromagnetic spectrum is being used is because it does not cause tissue damage as to the X-rays that are on the other end of the spectrum or uh, higher wavelengths which actually may lead to um, tissue warming or tissue damage. And moreover, the near-infrared light is the same light that is used for optical coherence tomography. Near-infrared spectroscopy is uh, a modality that um, is used to, to determine the chemical composition of an unknown substance. The underlying principle is that every chemical substance has a unique signature when a near-infrared light is shown on that, on that substance. And this is based on different absorption patterns. For example, here, you see collagen has different absorption than cholesterol and cholesterol esters. So based on the absorption of the light, then the chemical composition of the tissue, in a particular case, the presence of lipid core plaque, can be determined. For intracoronary applications, the near-infrared system is composed of a rotating catheter that actually is combined with intravascular ultrasonography, and it scans a specific segment of the coronary artery, assigning near-infrared light. For every interrogated segment on the coronary artery wall, a spectrum is acquired and then is transformed using an algorithm that was developed using autopsy specimens to a probability of having lipid core plaque. That probability is then mapped to a color map which is called the chemogram. And the chemogram essentially is a representation of the artery wall. The artery is cut longitudinally and open up. So from the top to the bottom of the image, that represents 0 to 360 degrees of the coronary artery wall, and then yellow color is what represents lipid core plaque. This is an example of near-infrared spectroscopy from a left anterior descending artery. What we can see is the presence of lipid core plaque in the mid-left anterior descending artery, which is shown in the yellow color. And this is a more magnified image of the near-infrared spectroscopy uh, chemogram, which um, demonstrates the presence and the location of the lipid, but moreover gives some quantitative measures of the amount of lipid present in the coronary artery wall. Specifically, there is an index that's called the LCBI, or Lipid Core Burden Index, that can be calculated for the entire pullback segment or for an area of interest, as in this particular case. And this is the percent of lipid, high probability lipid segments multiplied by 10. So 141 means that 14.1% of uh, the area in this particular segment of the coronary artery contains lipid. Moreover, the chemogram is accompanied by a, another representation that is called the block chemogram. And what this represents is the probability of having lipid core plaque in 2 mm intervals, probability being displayed in different colors, with yellow being high probability and red being low probability, whereas tan and orange are in between. So how was the near-infrared system uh, developed and validated? It was all based on the use of uh, autopsy specimens, so coronary arteries were obtained from cadavers, they were suspended into a perfusion chamber, and then near-infrared spectroscopy pullback was performed with simultaneous perfusion of the artery. Several um, millions of spectra were obtained in those segments, 
and were subsequently used to develop the algorithm, which was shown to have a good prognostic capacity for the presence of lipid core plaque. So for vessels less or equal to 3 millimeters, the area under the curve was 0 0.80, whereas for vessels that were a little smaller, less than 2.5 millimeters, there was even higher area under the curve. Moreover, in a subsequent study, near-infrared spectroscopy spectra were obtained from uh, live patients, and when those were compared with the autopsy study specimens, there was some good correlation suggesting that the signals obtained in the autop autopsy specimens were actually representative of what is happening in uh, live patients. How about the reproducibility of near-infrared spectroscopy? This has been demonstrated both uh, for between the different catheters. So, for example, this is uh, a near-infrared pullback performed uh, the first catheter, the same done with the second catheter, and then done again using the second catheter. And as you can see, there is excellent correlation between the two. And there are several publications, including this one from our group, that demonstrate that there is excellent reproducibility of the study, which validates it and also makes it a good modality for long-term or longitudinal imaging of coronary arteries to detect changes in lipid content over time in response to various anti-atherosclerotic strategies, which is exactly one of the clinical applications of near-infrared spectroscopy. But the first application is to better understand the pathophysiology of coronary artery disease. What we have learned using this modality in patients with acute coronary syndromes in red or stable angina in green is that the target lesion was more likely to contain lipid core plaque in ACS patients compared to stable patients. And that was also true for lipid core plaques that was not in the target area. Moreover, when near infrared spectroscopy was um, evaluated using intravascular ultrasonography, what was found is that a particular part, a particular type of plaque called attenuated plaque, is more likely to contain lipid. This is an example of an attenuated plaque, which essentially is an atheroma that causes attenuation of ultrasound but does not have calcification. And there are several studies showing that having attenuated plaque is associated with noriflow or is associated with a post procedural myocardial infarction with a larger amount of attenuation being more highly attenuated with noriflow. In a study using data from our center, what was found is that attenuated plaques were much more likely than ecolution plaques or calcified plaques to contain lipid core plaque. And the same thing was seen when optical coherence tomography was performed in association with intravascular ultrasound, confirming that attenuated plaques actually contain lipid core plaque. 